excuse me. All right. Well, it's nice to see everybody. Today, uh, we'll wrap up a little bit um, of the season and uh, talk a little bit through, through the way the year went. And then um, we'll be on the road recruiting after that. And the next time we'll all get back together again will be signing day, uh, early signing day. We'll, have, we'll do something on the 21st, I believe it is. So, um, but before anything, I do want to say a couple thank yous. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for always supporting us, always covering us, um, being here late nights, early mornings, um, and everything in between. And I appreciate all the fair uh, coverage that you guys have made throughout the year. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Robbins, Dave Hickey, our administration, um, in supporting us on this journey. Uh, as I've said from the very beginning, it is a build that's going to take a while. And uh, as the process continues, I think we're getting better. But uh, I do know that uh, there's still a long way to go. Um, I know Tommy the other night did a great job of thanking his support staff and um, the trainers and the doctors. And, uh, you know, I think that that was great that he did that. And I want to do the same thing. I think that what Tyler Owens and his strength staff has done, what Kevin and Paul and our training staff have done, what Dr. Hamilton and Dr. Saker have done for us, um, Barry and Tom and our equipment staff, um, they've just all done such an amazing job of helping this program grow and build and evolve into something very special. Um, and then, you know, finally, I would like to uh, thank our coaches um, and our whole, everyone that works on the third floor. I think that uh, to take a jump from being one in 23 over a two and a half year span um, to getting to five wins this year, to being, uh, beating a top 10 team on the road, to winning the Territorial Cup, to winning the opening uh, day game, beating a team like North Dakota State. Uh, I think there's a lot of positives this season and it has to do with our coaching staff and uh, all the support staff. Um, Matt Hayes does an incredible job up there keeping everything together and keep it going. And then finally, and most importantly, I wanna thank our players. Uh, I thought our players were just uh, outstanding this season. Um, they, they handled themselves uh, tremendously well uh, every minute of the day um, and I'm very grateful to them. We've had our best semester academically. Uh, each of the four sem five semesters I've been here, each semester has beaten the last semester. Uh, that will be the same way this semester. And uh, when you look at athletically, I think that our young freshmen have learned from our seniors. And uh, I think we're gonna have a very, very good football team here in the future. So uh, with all that being said, I would just say that uh, we are just getting started. Um, I be believe we're probably on the first floor of the build. Uh, I'd like to go a lot higher than this. Um, but I do think that um, we have gotten better and uh, that has shown um, from some of the results. Jacob, yeah, there's a lot of in terms of NIL is that schools like Arizona are going to be vulnerable to players getting coached by bigger programs. How much are you expecting that you could potentially lose players to NIL and what other things other than what we've seen thus far are you trying to do to combat that? Yeah, you know, the poaching thing is such a shame if that's actually going on. Um, it's, it's really not what it's meant to be. You know, that's not what we're looking for in terms of NIL opportunities. The idea is to be able to uh, help the players on your team and not, uh, you know, be um, enticed to leave for some other reason. Uh, I think that our family atmosphere, I think our program is built on a way that people want to be a part of Arizona football. We have a good collective we, uh, we have good sports, uh, good sponsors in Tucson. We have people that want to help our players um, the right way. Uh, we've certainly, our players have benefited from NIL, and I think they'll continue to benefit from NIL. Our boosters and our donors have made sure that our collective stays strong and that we can compete with anybody uh, on the West Coast, and that's what our plan is. Um, I, I hope that nobody leaves our program for what we would consider a better option financially, and um, I hope that we can keep everybody here and then uh, continue to bring in great players because uh, I believe we played 16 freshmen in this past game, uh, freshmen and redshirt freshmen, and um, we want to continue to keep those 16 at the core and then continue to add. You said earlier in the season you were expected to bring in 16 to 17 guys from the recruiting class in the spring. Is, is that number still the same? Yeah, yep. Yeah. I think we have uh, – 
when you look at the portal and the high school class, uh, it should be at about 16 to 18 players. Yeah. If not, maybe a couple more. Uh, who is on the fence as far as the NFL draft or coming back informed you to this point that they're definitely coming back? Um, no, we haven't. Uh, there, there's been nobody at this point in time that I would say are a fourth year player. There's no third year players on our team that are looking to leave. But if you were a fourth year player um, that are making their decision at this point in time, uh, we're still trying to collect information for them, and um, we'll start those meetings here <clears throat> in the next few days. For you to be patient. Is it difficult for me to be patient? Oh yeah, I'm the least patient person in the world. But um, yeah, I, I think patience, um, you know, is challenging because you want it now. We all want it now. We all want to see. Um, you know, roses, and we all want to be able to win championships. But uh, I also believe that process is the most important thing. And um, you go back and you look at historically uh, coaches that have taken over programs that were in, you know, tough, tough places or tough times. Um, you go back and you look at Jonathan Smith <clears throat> at Oregon State. I think he had his first winning season in his fourth year. You look at um, what went on with Mark Stoops at Kentucky. I think he had his first winning season in his fourth year. You go back and you continue to, to research and look at some of the programs that were in this type of situ situation. Um, they're challenging and they're hard. Um, I think uh, same thing at UCLA. They had their first winning season in the fourth year. So our hope is to be able to expedite that by a year and uh, do everything we possibly can to, um, to not have to wait uh, four years for that. The way that the portal works now, uh, especially with uh, this defined window, it feels very much like NFL free agency. You have experience um, with that. As, how would you describe the approach that you and your staff will take uh, toward that? Yeah, I think the portals, you know, the, the interesting part about the portal is uh, once you go in it is when you could start sniffing around versus in the NFL and free agency, agents are sniffing around prior to the start of free agency. So you, you're in this tight time frame where once you go in it, now you have this window and now you have to start sniffing and you hope that there's a place to land. Um, and you're not, a lot of places, you're not guaranteed a place to come back to. Um, so we're gonna try to build our roster through high school recruiting as always and, and retention of our own players. And then when the opportunity presents itself, I would say in the portal, which there are some grad transfers that are already in the portal, um, you could start you know, talking to them and get them here on official visits. And then December 5th, when the undergraduate portal drop occurs, then you have to figure out from that point in time, you know, who are you gonna go to next? Um, I thought Eli Drinkwitz made a great point in Missouri. When he said, you know, this, 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 the grass isn't always greener, you know, and to always think that you're just going to get in the portal and the next spot is going to be the better spot, uh, that's not just the case. And I think that all these kids hopefully will take a deep breath before they make that decision and they really look deep and they say, is this the right move for me? And then uh, do I want to play? Where do I want to play? And what's the best opportunity to move forward? What are positions of need, in your opinion? Um, you know, I would say that our, it's really going to determine a lot based upon do our fourth year players return or not return. Um, you know, does a Jordan Morgan return or not return? If a Jordan Morgan returns, does a left tackle, you know, no longer a position in need? Uh, does, um, do the safety, does Jackson Turner return, not return? Does Mike Wiley return, not return? Does Keon Bars return, not return? All those positions become either a position of need or position that's safe and secure, and then you can kind of go build depth. Um, we're, we're obviously gonna try to uh, build up our pass rushers, as we know that uh, Hunter and Jalen are both gone after their five or six years. Jerry Roberts has been six years in college, uh, at linebacker. So there's certain positions, CY, um, we certainly know he'll, he's moving on after his four years are done. So those positions are always ones that we look at. But I really like our young guys, I like our depth. Um, our defense got a lot better throughout the year the more, the more we played more players. 
So um, we're going to look at all of it, though, and see where we can improve. And in my opinion, we're going to look uh, everywhere to improve everywhere. Sabi and I had great out in this game, and also was the plan for Speedy to still participate in track and field. Um, how did Jonah grade out? Uh, I think very well. I haven't looked at his exact like PFF grade, and in our mind, he graded out really well uh, all season long. I think you know you look at a very rarely. I don't know how many times I could ever think about an opportunity where a true freshman comes in and starts every single game on the offensive line. Um, I don't. I don't know how often that occurs. Uh, and each week his grades were great. I mean, he was a top one or two graded out player for us almost every single week. Um, I would say that that didn't change this past week. Uh, Speedy, I have not talked to him yet about that. If that's what he assumed, if that's what he was planning on doing, then, then yes. Um, I think he's also planning on really focusing in on getting bigger, stronger, faster, and as a football player and, and see, you know, get his health to 100%. What's your biggest takeaway from where you guys started as to where you guys are? Oh, I would say um, that our seniors finished at an incredible level. Uh, the fact that we took the ball away five times in the game, in the Territorial Cup, and we took it away six times all last season is probably the biggest jump. And the fact that our offense went from 121st you know, in scoring to, uh, I think, 40th, and then 101st in passing to – ninth um i think some of the jumps that we've made i think we were the second um i think i saw this morning we had the second best increase in offense in the country uh, washington was one we were two um so all those jumps were all big but i would say the way our seniors played at the end um the way they they just made sure that we were not you know going to lose that cup uh you know it's one thing to win it it's another thing that two years ago the, we lost 70 to 7 here and within two years, we went from losing 70-7 to seven to winning the game. Uh, so I'm pretty proud of our team in that regard. I think 50 new players or so on uh, this year's team. Would you expect the roster turnover to be similar? Would you expect a lot of roster turnover every year just because of the nature of the business? I would expect this year to be <clears throat> pretty substantial. I would expect it to be in a pretty similar number. I don't know if it would be that high, but I'm going to say that we'll probably have a high number. Um, and then I think after that, it'll kind of mellow out. But I would guess that this year will be a, a, a significant um, turnover one more time. And then uh, I think we should be good to go from that point. Your uh, reaction to the ASU changes? Um, I, not much. I, I don't know them over there. I don't know the, I don't know the, the guys that they have hired. Um, I don't know really much about uh, what, what they've done or why they've done what they've done. So uh, we're really trying to focus everything we can on Arizona here and what we need to do to, to get to a bowl game. At the beginning of the season, you talked about Baylor going from one win to six wins to 11 wins, so Coach Rule there. Do you feel that even though you came up short or five, do you feel you're on a similar path? Uh, you know, I would like to be. Um, you know, there's some of the situations are a little unique. You know, they were 11 wins the year before the one win. You know, so that was a little bit different. Um, you look at what Art Bryles had there for a long time, you know, it was a little different situation. Um, I think, you know, very similar to Coach Aranda, right? They were 11 wins, then went to one win, then back to six wins. And, you know, so it's kind of unique how it works. Uh, our situation is different. You know, I told our team, I said, we finished last in 2019 in the Pac-12. We finished last in 2020. We finished last in 2021. And this year we finished eighth. So how do we get to six? How do we get to fourth? You know, how do you do that? Um, so, you know, I, I think the numbers are the numbers. Uh, I think it's clear when you beat teams you lost to the year before, you've gotten better. Uh, when you can move in certain categories, you know, uh, we were 100th running the ball last year. We were 33rd this year. You know, we averaged 3.63 yards a carry last year. This year we averaged 4.91. You know, we moved up from ninth, from 109th to 9th um, passing the ball. We moved up 101st to 22nd in offense. We went from six takeaways to 15 takeaways or something to that effect. So uh, all those improvements are huge. We played 16 true freshmen and redshirt freshmen and uh, really excited about the future of Arizona football. Is junior college still an avenue to pursue players? If everyone talks about the portal now and obviously a focus on high school recruiting, is that still a thing? 
Yeah, you know, I think it is. I think there's certainly some players that we're going to look at in the junior college ranks. Uh, how they got to junior college is really the biggest thing for me. You know, what made somebody a JUCO? Was it that they were a transfer and they needed a, a place to land and then they wanted to get back? They were, a, you know, a Division I pro player or was it because of academics? Well, you know, there's a lot of, re you know, what made you go to junior college prior to just taking a junior college player. Um, the other part of it I would say is um, because of the portal, I think it's a lot harder. To go um, to get you you know to go to a JUCO when you could probably find a very similar position at a guy that just played in a Power Five program, um, and then um, but yeah we are looking at a couple guys right now. Uh, Joe Borjan's a good example of someone we went and got this past year, and I believe he'll be a big uh, influence in our program moving forward. You obviously can't control uh, other schools coming for your coaches, but do you expect to initiate any coaching staff changes? Uh, I don't expect that, no, no. Um, as far as the, the QB hierarchy goes heading into next season, how, are, how do you plan to frame it to those guys? Is, is Jaden number one and the battle is for number two? Or how do you have that discussion? Yeah, I think right now uh, as we go into the, you know, the season or the off season, uh, Jaden Delora has done everything um, you would ask of a starting quarterback to do. Uh, Noah is our number two, clear cut. Um, and then um, I would say that Will and <clears throat> I think Gunner um, is probably going to move on to um, other things. Not sure exactly yet uh, what we're, we're talking about. A couple of opportunities. He might come back. He might end the graduate assistant job. We might. Um, but Gunner, I want Gunner around our program. So we'll figure that out uh, with Gunner as we continue down this this process this uh, path. And then we we'll have. A, Probably some guys coming in, you know, a freshman. So uh, they'll compete. Uh, competition is a central theme of our program. That's not going to change. But um, I think right now Noah's going to probably do everything he possibly can to compete with Jaden. Jaden will do everything he possibly can to uh, become the best version of himself. And with all of that being the case, I'll be excited to see the young guys coming in as well. How about the uh, five-point teams are going to get, you know, bowl game for you in the next? You know, I haven't heard if if that. I would love to be. I would love to uh, see if we can be. I did hear somewhere that the Pac-12 doesn't allow it. I don't know if that's true or not true. I think I read that somewhere. Um, so that would be, unfortunately, the holdup. But um, I certainly said to anybody that would listen that uh, if they'll take us, nothing more than, nothing better than practicing 15 more days. I told our players that. About the progress that uh, Jaden Delora made this whole entire season. Yeah, I thought that, um, you know, as I've said over and over to you guys, uh, I think Jaden Delora is a very special quarterback. Um, I think he's made great progress in learning our system. His ability to make plays off schedule is unique and is one in which um, I can't wait to see more of as we go. Uh, the more knowledge he has of where everybody's going to be, the better those plays are going to be. Uh, I know he's excited about hitting the weight room this offseason and continuing to build up body armor and get his speed up even more. Um, I think that uh, his poise back there, his understanding of the running game has been tremendous and has really improved throughout the year. And uh, I'm extremely excited about where Jaden Delora can go. I think he should be first-team All-Pac-12 player going into next season. And um, I'm hopeful that there'll be – every watch list possible for Jaden. Thank you guys. Happy holidays, Happy holidays to you guys. And uh, I'm sure I will see